we start the Abdullah Yusuf Ali translation of Surat Anasa, the women. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, O mankind, reference your guardian Lord, who created you from a single person, created of like nature his mate, and from them twain scattered, like seeds, countless men and women, fear God, through whom ye demand your mutual rights and reverence the wounds that bore you, for God ever watches over you. And as much as that's tied to the whole marriage thing, it also is tied to kind of refute the whole guardian deity thing, because people are like, oh, this is my, this is my patron saint, and this is my this, that, and the other. It's like, oh, no, your creator, that's your guardian entity. To orphans restore their property, when they reach their age, you know, adolescence at least 13 for a female, 15 for a male, according to some narrations. Nar substitute your worthless things for their good ones and devour not their substance by mixing it up with your own, for this is indeed a great sin if ye fear that ye shall not be able to deal justly with the orphans, marry women of your choice, two or three or four, but if ye fear that ye shall not be able to deal justly with them, then only one are a captive that your right hands possess. That will be more suitable to prevent you from doing injustice. So obviously we're not talking slave rape here. That's not allowed. But, you know, allowing slaves to be married and marrying slaves that have a choice. Um, but there's not wars to get slaves, so don't fall under that assumption too. And give the women on marriage their dower as a free gift. But if they of their own good pleasure remit any part of it to you, take it and enjoy it with right good cheer to those weak of understanding, make not over your property, which God hath made a means of support for you, but feed and clothe them therewith, and speak to them words of kindness and justice. Make trial of orphans until they reach the age of marriage. If then ye find sound judgment in them, release their property to them, but consume it not wastefully, nor in haste against their growing up. If the guardian is well off, let him claim no remuneration, but if he is poor, let him have for himself what is just and reasonable. When you release their property to them, take witnesses in their presence, but all sufficient is God in taking account from what is left by parents and those nearest related. There is a share for men and a share for women, whether the property be small or large, a determinate share. But if at the time of division other relatives or orphans are poor or present, feed them out of the property and speak to them words of kindness and justice. Let those disposing of an estate have the same fear in their minds as they would have for their own if they hadn't left a helpless family behind. Let them fear God and speak words of appropriate comfort. Those who unjustly eat up the property of orphans eat up a fire in their own bodies. They will soon be enduring a blazing fire. God thus directs you as regards to your children's inheritance, to the male a portion equal to that of two females. If only daughters, two or more, their share is two thirds of the inheritance. If only one, her share is a half. For parents, a sh sixth share of the inheritance to each. If the deceased left children, if no children, and the parents are the heirs, the mother has a third. If the deceased left brothers or sisters, the mother has a sixth. 
the distribution in all cases is after the payment of legacies. After the payment of legacies and debts, ye know not whether your parents or your children are nearest to you in benefit. These are settled portions ordained by God, and God is all-knowing, all-wise. The distribution in all cases is, that's in parentheses, so I should have whispered that. Um, but remember, the needs of the females, it's an obligation upon their husbands, their fathers, their brothers and uncles and grandparents and all that. So, and if not, society. So that explains why. Uh, now, in Western society, there's not a requirement that wives or anybody related to you even, not just the females, but anybody related to you gets a share. And in some societies, only the oldest male got the portion. And so, you know, And what your wives lead, your share is a half. If they lead no child, but if they leave a child, ye get a fourth after payment of legacies and debts. And what ye leave, their share is a fourth. If ye leave no child, but if ye leave a child, they get an eighth after payment of legacies and debts. If the man or woman whose inheritance is in question has left neither ascendants nor descendants, but has left a brother or a sister, each one of the two gets a sixth. But if more than two, they share in a third after payments of legacies and debts, so that no loss is caused to anyone. And thus it is ordained by God, and God is all-knowing, most forbearing. Those are limits set by God. Those who obey God and his messenger will be admitted to gardens with rivers flowing beneath, to abide therein further. And that will be the supreme achievement. But those who disobey God and his messenger and transgress his limits will be admitted to a fire to abide therein, and they shall have a humiliating punishment. If any of your women are guilty of lewdness, take the evidence of four reliable witnesses from among you against them, and if they testify confined them to houses until death do claim them, or God ordain for them some other way. Now, see, if people are going to, or thought that they're going to go about and continue certain things, that's not the same thing as, um, you know, just confining women to the houses just to do that. You know, that's, you know, obviously they've been shown guilty of certain things. And they've been shown that, the, you know, this is going to be a continual problem, so. Which is better than, you know, the prison system. If two men among you are guilty of lewdness, punish them both. If they repent and amend, leave them alone. For God is off returning most merciful. God accepts the repentance of those who do evil and ignorance and repent soon afterwards. To them will God turn in mercy, for God is full of knowledge and wisdom. Of no effect is the repentance of those who continue to do evil until death faces one of them, and he says, Now I have repented indeed, nor of those who die rejecting faith for them. Have we prepared a punishment most grievous? Now, just like the, uh, like the punishments that people endure, it's like, if they're only regretting because they're facing the punishment or they're dying. But I mean, people should still try to the last moment and be encouraged to the last moment, but it's gotta be an authentic repentance. It's gotta be, you know, or Oh, ye who believe ye are forbidden to inherit women against their will, nor should ye treat them with harshness that ye may take away part of the hour ye have given them except where they have been guilty of open lewdness. On the contrary, live with them on a footing of kindness and equity. If ye take a dislike to them, it may be that ye dislike a thing, and God brings about through it a great deal of good. But if ye decide to take one wife in place of another, 
even if he had given the latter a whole treasure for dower, take not the least bit of it back, would ye take it by slander and a manifest wrong? And how could ye take it when ye have gone in unto each other, and they have taken from you a solemn covenant? And remember the whole thing about, you know, with verse 19 there. That, you know, regards the issue of forced marriage. You know, this verse has been used to condemn any possibility of such things. Or to not, you know, give them what was agreed upon as a marriage condition, you know. Because people to this day still do both, but we don't know to need to go any further to show that Islam does not allow that sort of thing. And marry not women whom your father has married, except what has passed. It, it, it was shameful and odious, an abominable custom indeed. A Oedipus complex, really. Um, but yeah, in America, there's no law like that. You know. In New Jersey, I think people can marry their own parents. Uh, but, or maybe they changed that because it became more of a nationally known thing after, you know, thanks to social media. So, and some other things that we're about to get into verse 23 that you think people wouldn't have to be told, but in my country, uh, yeah. Prohibited to you. Are your mother's daughters, sisters, father's sisters, mother's sisters, brother's daughters, sister's daughters, foster mothers? Okay, you suck. You don't breastfeed you. Foster sisters, your wives' mothers, your stepdaughters under you, guardianship, both of your wives to whom ye have gone in, no prohibition if ye have not gone in. Those who have been. Wives of your sons proceeding from your loins, and two sisters in wedlock at one and the same time, except for what is past, for God is off forgiving most merciful. And so, see, we don't need to say, oh, and for the females, the you know, the fathers and the sons and the and the brothers and the and the uncles on both sides and, and that sort of thing. We, we don't really need to, you know, that's directly made clear by that statement, but so it only needs to be said once. Also, are women already married except those whom your right hands possess, and thus hath God ordained prohibitions against you except for these all others are lawful provided ye seek them in marriage with gifts from your property desiring chastity not lust seeking that ye derive benefit from them give them their dowers at least as prescribed but if after a dower is prescribed ye agree mutually to vary it there is no blame on you and god is all-knowing all-wise so again, this this kind of refutes the idea of that must that Muslim mean or slave rapers or something like that. Um, and so no, none of the Joseph Smith thing, where you have side marriages to fourteen women who are married to other dudes, calling them for the afterlife or not. No, uh, you, no you don't marry people who are married to other people. But sometimes you go to war and the, the wives decide, okay, we were wrong, our faith, uh, our faith before was wrong, and we want to side with these people. That's a little bit different. But we do find narration that there's still a waiting period for the women who, you know, leave their disbelieving husbands or their disbelieving husbands died or something. You know. If any of you have not the means wherewith to wed free believing women, they may wed believing girls, you know, women, um, from among those whom your right hands possess, and God hath full knowledge about your faith, ye are one from another, 
wed them with leave of their owners, and give them their dowers according to what is reasonable. They should be chaste, not lustful, not taking paramours. When they are taken in wedlock, if they fall into shame, their punishment is half that. For free women, this permission is for those among you who fear sin. It is better for you that ye practice self-restraint, and God is oft forgiving, most merciful. Now, this is not the same as prisoners who commit predatory sexual offenses. Um, this is, you know, re referring to consensual behavior. And by owners, we can also say the, uh, by permission of their people, the ahlahina, the ahl is, is the people. So you try at marriage should be more than the spouses ideally. But if you can't get permission of the of the of the father or the brother, uh, whatever to um, marry, you can still in Islamic law get married to somebody um, without parental approval. But there still has to be somebody who testifies on their behalf, whether it's the judge or not, that they've spoken to them away from those who might be coercing the marriage. That it's her consent and her interest. And, you know, this is a right that, that the women have in marriage. God doth wish to make clear to you and to show you the ordinances of those before you, and he doth wish to turn to you in mercy. And God is all-knowing, all-wise, and God doth wish to turn to you, but the wish of those who follow their lusts is that ye should turn away from him, far, far away. God doth wish to lighten your difficulties, for a man was created weak in flesh. O ye who believe, eat not up your property among yourselves in vanities, but let there be amongst you traffic and trade by mutual goodwill, nor kill destroy yourselves for verily god hath been to you most merciful and there's a oh maybe i'm thinking of that as you know don't kill yourself don't destroy yourself refers to the slow suicide too so drug abuse and stuff like this is kind of, you know, off the table in that respect, even though we're not talking about drugs in this course. If any do that in rancor and injustice, soon shall we cast them into the fire, and easy it is for God. If ye but eschew the most heinous of the things which are forbidden to do, which ye are forbidden to do, we shall remit out of you your evil minor deeds and admit you to a gate of great honor and in no wise covet those things in which god hath bestowed his gifts more freely on some of you than on others to men is allotted what they earn and to women what they earn but acts god of his bounty for god hath full knowledge of all things to benefit every one we have appointed sharers and heirs to property left by parents and relatives, to those also whom your right hand was pledged, give their due portion, for truly God is witness to all things. Husbands are the protectors and maintainers of their wives, because God has given the one more strength. Finances. Then the other, and because they support them, from their means. And therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient and guard in the husband's absence what God would have them guard as to those women on whose part ye fear disloyalty and ill conduct. Admonish them first. Next, refuse to share their beds. And last, Spank them lightly. But if they return to obedience, 
Seek not against them means of annoyance. For God is most high, great, above you all. Now, verse 34 there, see, it's... Adribuhunna. Discipline them. And it's shown that you're not allowed to cause injury, except maybe red skin. And the fearing disloyalty and ill conduct, it's not just, oh, I'm suspicious. No, no, no. They got to do something to, uh, they got to disobey in a way that's causing that fear. Basically, in a pre modern society, uh, in a modern society, these are the people who would go to jail for minor crimes. So you deal with your spouse for the, uh, Minor crimes that aren't quite of the level of a full beat down in public, um, you know, by the authorities, um, and you deal with things privately. And but see, if you can't talk and separate yourselves and stuff like this, if this is what they want to do to, you know, help make things right. Um, but again, again, it's you know, we're not advocating spousal abuse or any nonsense like that. If ye fear a breach between them twain a point two arbiters, one from his family and the other from hers, if they wish for peace, God will cause the reconciliation, for God hath full knowledge and is acquainted with all things. And so verse 36 is going to be the last one for this particular program. Um, but we can look at it in the context of that. But again, marriage counseling shouldn't be one person takes sides. You need you need at least a person on each side. And that's the stage when it becomes a public issue. So see, you can't really be, uh, I guess some people could, but um, you shouldn't really be beating a woman like a slave, much less a uh, somebody who needs to be publicly punished as a criminal. Um, and it'd be a secret matter, you know, if it gets that bad you know hand them over to the authorities for the for the crimes or something but um you know you're talking you're trying to save the marriage you know and they can jump right to marriage counseling if they want you know if the woman doesn't submit to any of the others but she can also get divorced you know she you know as we've seen earlier and we'll see again Serve God and join not any partners with him and do good to parents, kinsfolk, orphans, those in need, neighbors who are near, neighbors who are strangers, the companion by your side, the wayfarer you meet, and what your right hands possess, for God loveth not the arrogant, the vainglorious. And so I'll say, you know, doing good to everybody. So you can't be beating people into submission. That's not, you know, not even slaves, you know. 